When selling circuit breakers, you need to be able to select and apply those breakers properly. In the selection process, there's typically three things you need to know. What's the poles, what's the voltage, and what's the current? And a memory tool could be PVC, poles, volts, current. As far as the application, we need to know what kind of system it's being applied on. And when I talk about system, I'm talking about the available fault current. So what is the ampere interrupting rating of a molded case circuit breaker? In the 1960s, we introduced what's now known as our legacy breakers. The legacy breakers were defined by their frame sizes, FA, KA, LA, MA, NA, PA. Those breakers are now in obsolescence and have been replaced by the new power pack breakers, H-frame, J-frame, L-frame, M-frame, P-frame, R-frame. So what happens if you are called to replace or to provide a breaker uh, in today's marketplace? So what happens if a contractor calls and needs to replace a breaker? If you have the first two characters of the catalog number, you can quickly identify if you're talking about a legacy breaker or if you're talking about a power pack breaker. The legacy breakers, remember, are F, K, L, M, N, P. The power pack breakers are H, J, L, M, P, R. So you can see from that example that there's a legacy L and that there's a power pack L. The second character is the ampere interrupting rating, its ability to withstand the system fault current. On legacy breakers, those characters are A, H, C, etc. On power pack breakers, those, that second character is D, G, J. So you're never going to have the same combination of legacy versus power pack. So we see that the second character is tied to the ampere interrupting rating. On the legacy breakers, if you had, for instance, that second character being an A, if it was on an F-frame breaker, that meant that that breaker could withstand 18,000 amps of fault current. However, if the second character was an A on a K-frame breaker, a legacy breaker, the fault current that it could withstand was 25,000 amps. We've taken that mystery out when we introduced the power pack breakers. Now, if you have the second character as a D, it can withstand 18,000 amps regardless of what the frame size is. If the second character is a G, it can withstand 35,000 amps, regardless of what the frame size is. So what happens if the contractor calls and he says he needs to replace the main breaker of an NF panel board? And he gives you the part number FCL 34100. Well, from your identification, you know that an FC is a legacy breaker. So right away, we know that we're going to have to replace that with a power pack breaker. Now, the F-frame breaker legacy was a 100 amp frame breaker. So now we can step up to an H-frame breaker power pack, which will be a 150 amp frame breaker. But now let's take a look at that second character. That second character is a C. Applied at 480 volts, that C tells me that this breaker can withstand 65,000 amps of fault current. In my identification of power pack breakers, that means that I need to go to a HJ frame breaker. And that's how you can correspond the two different ones, legacy versus power pack. So the contractor has already told you that you need to replace the main breaker in an NF panel board. Now he might share with you that some of the branch breakers in there are EDB breakers, where the D, that second character, tells me that this is an 18,000 amp branch device. So probably what we have here in this example is I've got a 65,000 amp main 
and an 18,000 amp branch, which to me would tell me that I have a series rated NF panel board. The catalog number can be identified from the online digest. There's a table in there that will assist you in the poles, volts, current, and the ampere interrupting rating. And you can go and find it here. You'll need to have this table available to be able to work through the next example. Over here on the iLine panel board, what happens if your contractor calls and says, I need to replace this branch breaker FCB34050? You'll need to look at your tables to identify what the fault current is of that branch device. So while it's important to know for the selection of the circuit breaker, you need to have the poles, the volts, and the current. For the application of the breaker, you need to know what the ampere interrupting rating is.